Good morning or good afternoon. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of our emergency management webinar series. And today we're going to be talking about public safety planning with GIS for the upcoming solar eclipse. My name is Jeff Barani, and with me today are Mike Zeiler from our geodatabase team, as well as Kevin Armstrong. So today we want to um, have in this special edition, you know, kind of use this as an opportunity to talk about how the eclipse may be a great opportunity to educate others in your uh, agencies and your jurisdiction about the power of GIS and how that may be helpful for many different types of public safety events, but in this case, obviously, the, the eclipse. So um, we'll talk about an overview of the potential impact of the eclipse to, to public safety, both in terms of traffic and special events communication. Then we'll, we'll get an overview from one of our resident eclipse experts on the uh, eclipse's geographic impact and some unique analysis that's been done to, to characterize how this uh, how this may impact the U.S. and who might attend and uh, things like that. And Kevin Armstrong will share with us uh, some example applications and how you, you might leverage some of the apps and solution templates available with ArcGIS to meet the, some of the public safety needs um, that may arise for the upcoming eclipse on, on August 21st. We'll, we'll share with you some user examples that we've, we've heard from some of you that are doing great work already and working with your constituents, your, your stakeholders, your elected officials to help get prepared for, for the event, have prepared some great information products, and we'll share with you some of the, those experience. Finally, provide some a summary list of, of resources, which we will also email you after the, uh, the webinar talk about a quick call to action, and then we want to save a little bit of extra time during this webinar from, for some extended discussion. Unfortunately, you, uh, we won't be able to speak, but please use the chat windows to submit your either questions uh, or discussion topics or maybe talk about what you've done uh, to help get prepared for the eclipse, and we'll spend some time at the end of this webinar uh, having a quick uh, a discussion be between all of us. So again, this is a part of Esri's emergency management, you know, webinar series. It's a, it's a it's a special edition that we wanted to put together just in time for for the eclipse. Uh, these are normally at the uh, the first Thursday of every other month, and our next one will be on uh, modernizing your desktop and analysis workflows with ArcGIS Pro in, in September. But really, what we wanted to focus on today is, you know, with only a couple of weeks left, what you can do with with GIS to help prepare for. Uh, any kind of public safety issues that may arise with the upcoming eclipse. So from a kind of business problem perspective, I think a lot of the kind of common things that we've heard from, from many of you are concerns about traffic and traffic in areas that may not necessarily experience high level of traffic, you know, rural and or mountainous areas where there will be many kind of viewing events, you know, going on and many folks, you know, kind of congregating, you know, watching uh, uh, the, the eclipse may present unique challenges for public safety, you know, perhaps getting resources there, getting uh, emergency resources to where they need to be, simply, you know, getting uh, uh, folks to the, to the venue in time. We expect, you know, many traffic, you know, potential traffic issues, and we'll talk about some ways to, to deal with that. Um, also, communication, potential communication challenges. As everyone gets excited about viewing uh, the, the, the eclipse, this once in a lifetime experience, there may be lots of, uh, they could potentially overwhelm the communication system. And so, you know, in some, in some cases, agencies and jurisdictions are putting together uh, cell on wheels, as you see here, and preparing for potential uh, communication uh, issues. And that certainly can be uh, a challenge as well. And then, obviously, many different uh, special events that will be happening. There are di different community events will be popping up all across the path of, of the eclipse. Um, some of these are in, uh, you know, parks or camping areas. Some of these on, on private land and having a good understanding of where those are for to provide for, for safety, making sure that the dispatch, the public safety answering points have knowledge of where these events are occurring to uh, be able to route resources there in, in case uh, thing, things are needed. So really part of the reason why we wanted to have this special webinar on public safety planning with GIS with the eclipse is we really think of this as, as, as an opportunity. Not, you know, not many uh, uh, jurisdictions, thankfully, have, have disasters that impact or strike them. You know, from our experience on the, from the disaster response program at Esri, we often find that disasters are, are a time when people finally start to realize the power of what 
GIS can do for them and really the value of, of what it provides, how the modern aspects of GIS can meet the needs in kind of new ways. And we, we view the eclipse at some level as an opportunity to help kind of uh, exercise some of, the, some of the tools, some of the new capabilities that come with the ArcGIS platform, as, as well as some of the existing policies and procedures that are in, ca in place from a public safety perspective. So for example, we've, we've heard that many emergency operation centers are going to activate specifically for th this event. Obviously, we've got we know when this will happen. There's specific you know times it's it's set, so it's a chance to think about how you might and if you haven't done so already, how you might engage with your public safety officials, your decision makers, the the director of your emergency management agency, and and start to think about some of the apps that you might configure uh, inside your your uh, your jurisdiction to provide value uh, to help kind of manage this event not only for the the, uh, the large crowds that may gather in the areas, but also in case that something you know, uh, uh, goes wrong, a, a weather event or something along those lines where um, these things are needed. So we think this is a kind of a, a great opportunity. And, and if you haven't started, you know, preparing, hopefully some of the materials that we share with you today will give you some ideas of some of the types of things that you may be able to do in your jurisdiction uh, to not only help be prepared for the, the eclipse and any issues that may or be arise, but also use this as a training opportunity, if you will, uh, for potentially the next, you know, flood or, or wildfire or other disaster that may impact your community. So a couple of things that you'll see here in a few minutes from from Kevin, and we just I just kind of wanted to highlight here. You know, first of all, the ability to you know map your your special events. There's a set of solution templates that you can you know download that provide a way to mark up with a ma the map of common things that happen for you know special events like a parade or a uh, a marathon that may happen you know in your jurisdiction in this case there's many you know viewing um, uh, events that are going on that are bringing in additional resources like you know uh, porta potties or medical facilities or that type of thing there's a template inside here that it can help you map those event uh, elements you know really quickly and Kevin will show that to you here in a few minutes uh, obviously, situation awareness will be key, and we'll talk about, Kevin will show you some example apps that you can configure for your command center or your emergency operations center to help maintain situation awareness as the event unfolds. You know, not only, you know, things like, you know, weather or cloud cover or precipitation, but also traffic information coming from a variety of different sources and other elements that you may be able to bring in from your emergency management agency, like your crisis information management system. We'll talk about, Kevin will talk about a couple different sources for, for traffic and things that you can leverage, you know, immediately with inside some of your uh, applications. And then finally, you know, the, another key element is what um, types of apps that you can configure to share information with the public, to get information out to them, to, to to help them help share where these uh, viewing events may be going on and any potential issues that may or be arise as, as they're trying to get in and out of these uh, particular uh, venue locations. So that's just a preview of what you'll see here in just a few minutes in terms of apps to think about in terms of preparing for uh, the, the, this uh, uh, unique event that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. But with that, I would like to uh, pause for a minute and turn this over to, to Michael Zeiler from our a product engineer on our geodatabase team, who's actually one of our resident eclipse experts to take us through some additional information on the eclipse. So take it away, Mike. And Mike might need to come off mute there. Yes. Okay. Th thanks, Jeff. Um, my name is Mike Zeiler, and um, I'm going to be talking to you about some geographic analysis I've done on the impact of the solar eclipse on communities within the path of, of total solar eclipse. Um, I, I'm speaking uh, in, in two roles here. Um, my day job is I'm a technical writer for, for Esri, uh, and I've been working for Esri since uh, 1995. Um, in, in, in my personal time, I enjoy doing recreational cartography, combining my professional skills with my interest in solar eclipses. I've traveled around the world since 1991 to see solar eclipses, and I operate a website called Great American Eclipse. Um, for those of you who were at the recent user conference in San Diego, you, you probably saw my 40-foot-long eclipse map uh, in the lobby downstairs. 
so let's see. Okay, so uh, uh, here's a couple of uh, resources from my website that um, that you'll find of interest. Uh, first, um, some of the, the the information I'm going to be talking about is in this um, in this box called Eclipse Visitors and Traffic. So if if, if you'd like to learn more about uh, the, the traffic impact in your community, you can go on my website GreatAmericanEclipse.com and and find that. Another resource is a web app that I've developed, and the web app can either be used as is or significantly. I've made um, the 20 or so uh, web layers in this web app available so that if you're developing uh, your own web map or web app, you can use some of my layers to uh, jumpstart uh, your online GIS offerings um, upon the Eclipse. So uh, early this year, I started thinking about um, how GIS could be used uh, to, to say something meaningful about the eclipse. And so I began first with a, with, with a simple uh, population analysis. I used the 2010 census data, extrapolated to 2017, and, and buffer analysis in ArcGIS Pro. And I came up with, with a series of, of, of slides. Um, you can see that um, 12 million people already with, live within the path of totality. Um, but what gets, what gets interesting is um, there's 47 million people within 100, million, uh, within 100 miles of the eclipse. That's significant because this event is going to be going viral and a lot of people uh, that, that are nearby one or 200 miles away are, are going to get the idea that this is, is a short one-day drive and that uh, that they should go to this drive to see um, something that uh, will be pro properly hyped in the social media because it truly is nature's grandest sight. Next, I took my analysis a little bit further and I used some of the uh, tools in ArcGIS Pro to create drive time areas. So this map will show you at a glance uh, for each location how many hours um, it'll take to get to the path of totality. Of course, you can see that the, the traffic tends to converge upon the interstates. And, um, and this forms um, what I call drive shed maps. A drive shed is similar to a watershed except instead of drops of rain accumulating into uh, streams and, and rivers, um, cars are accumulating into first minor roads, secondary um, intermediate roads, and then interstate highways, and they're converging upon the, the closest destination in the path of totality. One drive shed uh, is, is going to be extreme, and that's where I-95 meets the path of totality near Santee, South Carolina. This is the closest destination for 74 million people, so that is an easily predictable traffic choke point. Uh, and you can see some of the other drive sheds on, on this here. The second, surprisingly, is Idaho, um, and Idaho ranks high because um, it's the closest destination for Southern California, Arizona, and Utah. And um, on my website, you can find um, more of these drive sheds. This map takes, um, uh, takes all those drive sheds together. It looks like a hydro hydrographic map, but it really is a drive shed map. And it, 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 it'll show you how, how traffic will funnel into these uh, choke points. Um, again, I used uh, a, a lot of uh, GIS analysis, in this case, the Choose Best Facilities tool in ArcGIS Pro. I should say that um, in the old ArcGIS desktop environment, this would have been a much more difficult type of analysis to run, but, but the geoprocessing tools in ArcGIS Pro really have made this job, this type of analysis, a lot more streamlined and a lot more easier to achieve. So uh, I took my analysis, um, since I had all of this data, the census data and 
the ArcGIS Online Road Network, um, I was curious um, whether uh, I could take a stab at actually predicting how many people will come and, and where the real choke points are. And so my method in brief was I began with, with um, trying to estimate what the likelihood of an average person in Denver, Colorado, about 200 miles from the path of uh, the center line of, of the eclipse, what's the likelihood that, that a person, an average person would go and see the eclipse? The motivating factors are they're going to hear on social media that this is a magnific magnificent spectacle, a sight of a lifetime, which is true. And um, it's going to attract people interested in natural beauty. And it's an easy day trip for those from that proximity. The inhibiting factors for, for visitation are indifference or ignorance. And obviously, a lot of people are going to be in work or school that day and, and can't get out. Some people have limited financial means. And um, there's going to be a lot of hype in the media that uh, some people will be inhibited because of the fear of traffic jams. Considering all those factors, and I, I consulted with, with a few other experts, I came up with uh, the judgment that the, the likelihood of an average person from Denver making that drive was between half a percent and two percent. And of course, the further away you are, that likelihood diminishes. So I have that estimate for places twice as far away. So this is easily translated into um, a simple formula that you can apply in ArcGIS. And um, so when, when I crunch all those numbers, the, the result that I get is, while 12 million people already live inside the path of totality, I estimate that a between 1.85 and 7.4 million people Will 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 make the trip, uh, and for some communities, that's going to going to be very significant. Uh, it for for a few communities, they're going to see double or or five times their population on that day. So um, th this is one, another one of a series of maps on that page that I referenced to you at the beginning on my website. How many people go to see the eclipse in South Carolina? South Carolina will, will be the most impacted state because of its proximity to the entire eastern seaboard. Um, and, and applying my formula, I, I estimate between half a million and two mi million people will make the drive on eclipse day. And you can imagine that's going to be very impactful for, for a lot of communities in South Carolina. Next up, um, Tennessee actually ranks second highest in, in my estimates for, for traffic choke points because it's attracting uh, people from, uh, from New York State down to uh, Ohio, Indiana, and Tennessee, and, and, and some people from, from the southern states. So between 360 million, uh, 360,000 and 1.4 million people, I expect to converge on Tennessee. Um, Idaho, Likewise, uh, between 93,000 and, and 370,000. Um, I'm just showing a few of these maps that I've developed here. You can find more of these maps on my website. So this is how the statistics break down. The, the chart on the top gives the total population for which that state is the closest destination. The more significant chart is on the bottom where uh, taking into account proximity of populated areas, um, I estimate the, the actual impact on visitation. So you can see these numbers here. Um, again, I'm going to go through this, and you can download um, all of this or visit the website to get all of this data. I've also taken this uh, to a very granular level. Since I had the data, um, I went ahead and computed what um, the, the traffic um, counts will be um, based on, on my method for where each highway intersects the center line of eclipse. Now, um, here, here's some important caveats for my analysis. Um, obviously, weather is, is, is going to be a, a big impact. If it's cloudy in one area, then many people will drive to another area or simply won't go. 
and my my analysis doesn't take into account um, certain factors such as where um, local eclipse festivals are, are going to draw people for example Moonstock in southern Illinois um, Ozzy Osbourne is going to start with bark at the moon at the time of the eclipse that'll draw a lot of um, um, metal rock fans um, heavy metal rock fans um, and and there's some places of, of high scenery especially someplace like the Grand Tetons that a lot of people will want to go to um, and, and there's some other factors that that I don't take into account because they're, they're, they're very difficult to quantify um, I think uh, the, the, the biggest impact will be the impact of social media. This is the first solar eclipse in the social media age in a heavily populated area. And I think that many people, um, most people that will go to the eclipse won't decide until the last week and they'll be motivated by um, all that they hear on social media and broadcast media. So I, I'd like to make clear that, that my analysis, while it may appear very detailed and granular, um, it should be really considered as a first order approximation. Um, but my analysis uh, can be used to predict um, where, where some of the real traffic ch uh, choke points are. Um, so the, the messaging that um, my, my friends and I are doing, my friends in the Eclipse community, um, is uh, we're trying to get the message across that this is an incredibly beautiful spectacle, but uh, but there's some some important safety messages. For example, get off the road before the eclipse begins because that's the potential for real disasters. Somebody driving on the interstate right when when totality begins is going to be totally distracted by that sight, and 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 and, and a real danger is is collisions uh, uh, among cars at that time. So wh wh whatever people wh whatever local authorities can do to provide safe uh, parking areas just off um, just off the uh, interstate off ramps that, that that would be um, a, a, a very good idea and also people should avoid um, the predictable congestion points that's that's a real point of the analysis that I've done um, and people should arrive um, at their destination at least a day before the morning of the eclipse, uh, I, I think, has the real potential to be the largest nationwide traffic jam in U.S. history. Um, and, and so people should arrive at least a day before and be completely self-sufficient, bring everything that they're going to need, food, water, tent, sleeping bags, toilet paper, all the rest of it, bring everything they need, and then stay a bit afterwards until the traffic clears. Um, now here, here's the good stuff for you. Um, uh, I've done a lot of work of, I've developed a lot of material over the last three years. Um, so uh, you can freely use numerous maps and graphics directly from my website. I've also um, uh, provided a Dropbox with high resolution maps and graphics that can be freely used. Um, and um, the, there's a web app that is also ready to use that, that people can free, freely use. Um, together with uh, some, some, uh, some of our colleagues in the Story Maps department uh, of Esri, we've developed a crowdsource event app that you can enter um, events. And then uh, this last item probably might be the most useful for you if you're developing web maps of your own. And um, I've developed about 20 different um, uh, feature layers uh, that, are, that are ready to use. These feature layers um, have um, some of the drive shed information that I've developed. Uh, they have the, the outlines of the path of the eclipse, the duration of totality within the eclipse, and so forth. Um, so thank you, and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions at the end. Thanks, Mike. That was that was a great overview, and we'll we'll switch over to, to Kevin here for a demonstration here in just a sec. But but Mike, I think you've got everyone's you know curiosity going, and they they wonder where if you're willing to share where you're going to be when when the eclipse happens. Great. Um, I'm going to be in Casper, Wyoming, with my family, and um, I, I've considered the entire path of totality where the best place to go is. I chose Casper because. It's got very good weather odds, 
and it also has um, a highway system, highways to the east and west that go several hundred miles inside the path of totality um, so that if, if, if there's local cloudiness, we can relocate. Um, this is a mindset of an eclipse chaser, which is the complete opposite of the mindset of a tornado chaser. Great. Thank, thanks, Mike. And, and thanks for that great overview. So now we want to switch gears and turn it over to Kevin Armstrong to take us a, through a quick tour of some of the apps that you might be configured to be better prepared in, in your jurisdiction. So take it away, Kevin. All right. Thanks, Jeff. And what I'd like to do is, is you know, as, as Mike alluded to, you know, this is a, a really large event for, for the entire U.S. And uh, I'd like to just give you an overview of a couple out-of-the-box applications or solution templates that Esri has that you can use today to really begin pl to plan for and respond during the eclipse uh, in your agency. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the solution site, so solutions.arcgis.com, and this is where you can go and find all of our solution templates for all the different communities, not just public safety. And you can see here we have it sorted uh, along the bottom here, if I just go to emergency management, we have a, a selection of applications by, you know, by the, the area of emergency management. So preparedness, response, uh, recovery, et cetera. And what I want to do is just show you uh, the gallery of applications we have for emergency management and some of those that are available to you uh, for a special event. So if I go up to the gallery page and click on emergency management, I'm just going to type in a search called events, and this will return to me. Uh, we have 10 templates in here that you can use uh, related to a special event, which is, you know, as you might classify this eclipse is sort of a nationwide special event. And, you know, we have apps in here, everything from an application you can use to create and manage road closures uh, to an event locator application if you want to have something for the public. Uh, maybe your your town or county or area has, you know, 10 or 15 different uh, eclipse related events and you'd like to be able to have someone log in and and uh, or just open the website and type in their address and find the events near them. Um, and we also have some things that are more related to planning. So putting together a permit review process, you know, if people are have submitted a plan for their event for the eclipse you can follow that through the approval process and then getting up to the to the actual creation of the plan we have this event site map template and this is the one that i want to focus on first and what this template does it allows you to basically sketch out the plan for a special event so if it's something like a, a marathon or, or a festival in this case maybe an eclipse event where you need to, uh, you have a predefined area and you're gonna be putting up things like first aid tents and con food concessions and uh, porta potties and things like that. And, and these plans are generally, you know, sketched out by hand or perhaps they're created in a PDF document. Uh, but what this template allows you to do is create a digital plan so that, uh, you know, you can have people digitally enter this data and allow access within your agency or maybe even to the public of these events and make changes and have those changes viewed live uh, by either folks internal or to the public as well. So to deploy this application, uh, we have some steps right here on the website you can do to get started and you know how to publish the layers and, and create the web maps and configure the applications. Uh, but what I'd like to show you is actually a a new tool we have for deploying all of these solutions. And this is, um, if you just hit the set up with deployment tool, the, the ArcGIS solutions deployment tool, you can download this. It's an ArcGIS Pro add-in. And I wanna show you what this does for you. So if we slide over to uh, ArcGIS Pro, uh, you can install the add-in. Esri maintains the, the list of apps that you can deploy with it. And if I go over to my share button, you'll see this RTS solutions deployment tool. And clicking on that, it loads a task file uh, in ArcGIS Pro, which can walk me through the steps I need to deploy specific applications. 
So the first step is obviously to sign into your ArcGIS organization. So I'm already signed in, so I can move past that to the next step, which is deploy a solution. So when I click on that, this will load all the current solutions, the most recent versions of them uh, that we have, not just for emergency management, but local government, state government, et cetera. If I expand emergency management, we can see that these are all the different solutions. Here's that event sitemap solution uh, that's available to me. So just clicking on that and hitting deploy will basically take this entire template, the feature services, the web maps, the web applications, and deploy all of them at once. So it does everything for you. It, it creates the hosted services, it creates the web maps for them, it configures your pop-ups, your symbology, everything for you all at once. You don't have to do that manually yourself. So when you hit deploy on ArcGIS Pro, it takes a minute or two to run, so I've, I've already run it uh, with my ArcGIS organization. And if I go over here to my content and just search by events, you can see what it does is it creates several things. So I have these community event assets, community events, feature services. I have this event site map, web application, and I have this event site map, which is the web map. Now the top two I'll explain later is why we created those as well. But this is a very nice, easy to use application. So if I open up the app, again, I haven't done anything except deploy this from ArcGIS Pro. It creates a finished application for me. So this is the event site map. I've added a few data sets just so we have something to look at. I've done a little bit of digitizing beforehand. And what this does, is it allows you to create an event plan for multiple events. So I can look, I've created two events here and we're looking at Nashville, uh, Tennessee, which is in the path of totality. And uh, these are just some made up events that I, that I came up with. So I can choose between the two. Uh, I'll just do Nissan Stadium and hit apply. And now I can open up our editing widget and begin creating that event plan. Again, all this, all the app, the symbology, everything was created ahead of time. I didn't have to do any of this manually. The ArcGIS Pro, uh, solutions deployment tool automatically creates this information for me. So I can go in here and have some preset values on, you know, what date and time I'm going to set up. Uh, anything that I create will automatically be tagged with these attributes. So I can just say, okay, everything that I create, whether it's a point line or polygon, will automatically have these attributes in it. And now I can just go in and sketch out the plan. So if I want to put uh, something like a restroom, I can just go onto the map, click, put the point down, and that begins creating my plan. So very simple, easy to use template. Uh, you can change this template, actually in the deployment tool allows you to configure some of the, the domains on the back end. So you know we're showing you a certain list here of, of items that you might have during a special event. You, know, you can use any or all of these, you can add your own if you like. Um, and it's lines and polygons too, you know, if you're going to have a event parking area or something like that, you can just go in, begin digitizing and create your plan. Very easy to um, go and create this information. Right? So this is an out of the box application, easy to use and configure and deploy and start sketching out those plans. And the nice thing is this application is live. So anytime someone logs in, they're going to see the latest edits. Uh, to your plan. Now that we're, we've begun planning for the event, the next thing I'd like to do is uh, talk about another solution we have, which is the uh, Situational Awareness app. Uh, so in your EOC or, or other area where you want to monitor what's going on during the eclipse or during the actual event, um, and we can do this through our Situational Awareness Viewer application. Now this is a template again, you can deploy through, through ArcGIS Pro, uh, or you can go through the help doc and, and deploy it yourself. And all it is is a configuration of Web App Builder uh, with the Situational Awareness widget. But what I first wanna do is just show you the map behind the scenes here and show you some of the items that are in this. So. What we're doing here is, you know, we want live feeds of information for this app. 
because as we monitor the app, we want to know things like, you know, Mike mentioned earlier, you know, he's going to Casper, Wyoming because it's, he's got a lot of flexibility with the weather turns bad or not. Well, in your situational awareness viewer, you might want to have live feeds of weather information, right? So I have some of those in here, and those are easy to add to your web application. All you have to do is go to Add and Browse Living Atlas Layers. And we have a category within here called Earth Observations. So if you scroll down to that category, you can begin seeing some of the live weather feeds that are available to you as part of ArcGIS. So things like weather radar, uh, short-term storm warnings, weather watches, wind conditions. These are all free for you to use as part of your ArcGIS subscription. You know, if you're out west, um, you're, maybe you have some wildfires nearby, the, the smoke forecast uh, that's put out, you know, might be a useful inf piece of information for you to have to see ahead of the eclipse, you know, are we likely to, to have a hazy day? Right, so you can add any of these layers to your map and begin to use those in your situational awareness viewer. The other thing that I've added here is Waze Alerts. And these are actual, this is a live feed of Waze Alerts for the Nashville area. So everything that you see here is, um, is happening. This is you know, less than an hour ago, we had an accident reported here um, just southeast of Nashville. And this feed is coming through GeoEvent Server. And as part of our GeoEvent Server, we have a, a connector built specifically for pulling information from Waze. So this is the, we'll send you this link as well after the webinar. But if you have GeoEvent Server, you can sign up for the Waze Connected Citizens Program uh, at this link here below. And once you do that, this connector you can download for free and use and begin to subscribe to that Waze feed for your area. So in this case, I have a Waze feed for coming in live for Nashville. That's another live stream of information. And the other thing that I've added in here are some of the eclipse events. Like these are the events that I created for Nashville. So I want to know their location, even down to um, some of the event plan information that we have uh, for, for the stadium. So where our waters and all that is can be available to you in this viewer. And I've gone in and added a few other things like where are local law enforcement locations, where are my fire stations. This information is coming from uh, the high field, the DHS high field open data uh, site. So this is a nationwide layer of things like hospitals and public schools, et cetera, that you can use. And I'll show you why we're, we're using that here. So I can design this web map with all these live layers. I have live traffic here, which is also coming from, from Esri. And as Mike mentioned before, he's made available feature services of eclipse-related uh, phenomenon. So if I zoom out a bit here uh, to Tennessee, you can see this is the path of the total solar eclipse. So everything within the darker area here will see um, you know, 100% obstruction of the sun. And some other things we have is, you know, yes, this area of the solar eclipse is, you know, we will see 100% obstruction, but looking beyond that area, these lines of partial eclipse, you know, going all the way far south into Alabama, you can see, you know, still over 90% of the sun being blocked out. So just because you're not in total in the path of totality doesn't mean that it's not going to get dark and, and um, have the potential to cause traffic issues or things that are, you know, could be possible during the eclipse. There's also a nice layer here of of what the duration of the eclipse will be in your area. Uh, so I just loaded that now. So these lines show you what will be the, uh, how much time will the sun be 100% obstructed? So for Nashville, we can see it's almost two minutes uh, in this part of the country. Now this is a nationwide data set, so you can load this for your area as well to see what the duration of totality will be uh, for your area. So these are all very good things, good feeds to have available to you. Now, what this Situational Awareness Viewer allows you to do is I'll, I'll open that up now and launch that application, is during the, the day of the event, 
um, or even you know leading up to the event you can open up this situational awareness viewer and we have a few tools that are already configured out of the box and the first one is our situational awareness widget and what this widget does it allows you to basically view all the information that that we've created ahead of time you know the live feeds like the accident uh, that we saw earlier and do some analysis around those so if i wanted to look at this accident and use that as my input to my situational awareness widget let's buffer that by say two miles we can see you know how many schools are within that area what are the nearest fire stations what are the nearest police departments to that incident this is just a very simple way to judge the impact of specific events maybe you have a weather warning or uh, you want to maybe even go in and draw your own custom polygon say you know we've had an incident in this area and I want to see what's the impact what's going on in this area and I can see okay I've had one eclipse event is in that area I have one school in that area and I can go in with this uh, widget and I can do a few things I can create a snapshot uh, of this incident so what this does for me is uh, allows me to um, basically create a a snapshot of the data so everything that happens in this extent i can create a snapshot of the the incident the affected features etc and it creates its own web map so if i want to do a briefing i can do that or i could print a report of this area so i could say this is our incident report and we can just do a landscape hit ok and what this does, this is all included in the situational awareness widget, is it takes all the data, so the eclipse, it shows me the events that are affected by this particular incident. So I see Music City Eclipse, I get some attribute information, I can see the number of bridges within that area and their names, I can see the schools that are affected and their information as well. So this is a really nice template to use to show you what's affected maybe i have to print something out real quick just to give somebody uh, an overview and it also gives me a nice looking map uh, based from you know using all the information that was in the web app so very useful tools for for being uh, up to speed on live live events during the actual eclipse and the last thing i want to show you here is um, sharing information with the public so we have um, we had talked earlier about road closures, right? Maybe you want to, uh, you know, for a special event, you may need to close a road or two for, um, you know, for that event. And you need to communicate that with the public, whether that's folks who are residents or people visiting from out of town. So we have a road closures template. I've already deployed that here. And it creates this road closures feature service. And you can, this is editable and you can go in and and click on the map just like we showed earlier and enter your road closure information let's say you now want to share this with the public you don't want to share uh, a feature service with the public that has editing enabled on it right so this is a service that's meant for for your use internally to create uh, road closures edit their status etc but if you want to share this out to the public you don't want to share that editable layer so what you can do is use this create view option here on the details page for this feature service and what we can say is we'll call this our uh, public public use road closures and we'll tag this with eclipse and we'll save that in our eclipse folder and hit ok so what this is doing it's basically creating a a different version of this hosted feature service so any edits i make to road closures are still going to be viewable through this read only version of it it's just this is a much more scalable and and easier to use uh, service for the public we don't want to have to disable editing or, or worry about someone trying to edit our road closures this is a read only view of the road closure information so once i create that view i'm going to go back to my content here and i've already created a web, web map here this public information web map i'm going to open that up 
in our map viewer, and I want to add those road closures into our web map. So you'll see I've already added a few things in here. We already have our Waze alerts. We have a public version of that. Same with community events and all the event information. These are all read-only views. So I'm going to go in and search for layers. We'll type in Eclipse. And we'll see here's that public use road closures layer. So we'll go ahead and add that into our map. Hit done. And save. And now we can, now that we have the web map, we can go and create our public version, our public application. Uh, so I just hit share. I can go in and create a web app, use Web App Builder, and create the public information map. Now, in the interest of time, I've already uh, created this. So I'm just going to go back and show it. So here's our public information. Nope, wrong link. Here's our public information app. We're going to view this. And this application is out of the box. It's Web App Builder. We have our road closures in there. We see, you know, it's configured the information summary of that app, uh, widget to show our Eclipse events. So we see the Eclipse at Nissan Stadium. I can zoom down to that, see the read only version of my event plan. I have a live feed of those Waze traffic alerts coming in. So I can see, <clears throat> excuse me all the live traffic accidents as they happen, I can make the public aware of that information. So again, a lot of out of the box tools and templates you can use to begin managing events uh, related to the Eclipse in your area. Uh, with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Jeff. Great, thanks, Kevin. So, yeah, that that you know basically you know encompasses some of the kind of key capabilities that we thought it would be worth kind of getting started with. Um, if you haven't had a chance to prepare for for the eclipse yet, uh, I realize that this may be late in the game for 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 many of you. We've heard that you know many agencies have been planning for as, as long as three years and getting ready for this uh, particular event and the impact that may cause on on, on their jurisdiction. Um, and, and and we applaud their their preparedness efforts. What we did, we certainly wanted to kind of highlight here some some additional apps if they need to fill if we need to fill additional gaps or you need to fill additional gaps in some of your prepared measures and as you saw it's pretty quick to configure some of these you know capabilities so in this in this next section, we wanted to highlight some some user examples. So I always learn a tremendous amount by the the great work that our, our user community uh, uh, does, and and what you you share with us in terms of the great work that that you do. And we were just wanted to spend a few minutes and talk about three different jurisdictions and some of the things that they've done uh, to get prepared for for this this event. So we've seen the the city of Salem, Oregon, and some of the great uh, work going on there, and being prepared to collect manage and report on, on data for various aspects such as incidents, observations, uh, communication status, etc. Being able to configure that here we see with inside the operations dashboard and be able to have, have uh, see some of the threshold and count information to report on some of the things that are being reported in from, from, from other areas. Another screenshot here of helping to kind of manage the data. So Kevin showed a couple of different views a, a minute ago of doing that. And just note that with inside the Web App Builder, you, uh, others inside the organization can can uh, uh, input and update data such as you know observations. And it doesn't just have to be the GIS staff that that keeps this information uh, uh, up to date. You can you know deputize others in your agency to help collect and manage information as, as as they've done here in the city of Salem. And then this becomes available in some of the main you know situation awareness applications that they've configured for for the the, the jurisdiction. In, the, in this case. Their, their safe application, which is their kind of flagship uh, uh, product. Um, and then finally, you know, as, as Kevin showed earlier, just, just different examples of now showing how this information can be shared with the public to report out on different types of, of events, uh, incidents, or, or things that are going on within the jurisdiction. So great work from the, the city of Salem in terms of how they've uh, uh, started to prepare with, with GIS for this, this rare event.
Next, I wanted to, to highlight um, from the state of Oregon and their Raptor application. The public version of their Raptor application has, has accommodated uh, some ad additional elements for the particular clip. This is a kind of a dial tone application that they use all the time to maintain situation awareness, share this in various information on, with the public for things like the, the great heat wave that's hitting you know right, right, right now and the over 100 degree temperatures on the coast, as you can see there, or you know wildfires or earthquakes in the jurisdiction. And what the team has done is added in additional details of the eclipse right here into the, into the viewer. So you can see that the, the path of totality has been added in here to the map. And they're also sh showcasing and highlighting some of the events that are going on across the, the, the jurisdiction. Um, they were able to, to uh, engage with the different uh, agencies and departments that are, that are working on collecting information on, on the, the events. They're able to quickly digitize, or excuse me, geocode this information and present it here uh, on a map, but then also provide the capability for additional inputs to uh, events as they're uh, made aware uh, from a, from a geoform and keep this information you know up to date. So again, great work from the, the state of Oregon and adding in um, uh, the the eclipse information to their their standing situation awareness application called Raptor and the the links there. So uh, thank, thanks to the team for for sharing that. And then finally, I wanted to share uh, some examples from. Bonneville County, Idaho, and some of the great work that the team there, Trish and team, have done to help get prepared for, for this event. Um, the, 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 you know, really kind of interesting in, in talking to them and finding out how this has become a real kind of catalyst event in their community for others inside their organization to really kind of understand what GIS can do in times of crisis from the emergency management officials to sheriff's office or elected officials. They, they see, saw how the various information products pr provided, provided a real kind of um, a wow factor. So, if, um, of, so, for example, they shared several different story maps, and, the, and these are public, and this is the front page here, just giving details on the, on, on the event, helping to provide information on, really kind of from a commerce perspective, and on the, the great influx of people that will be coming into to, to their area, and really kind of good story. Not only, in the, the other kind of key thing here is being able to share this information, not only within the county itself, but in a, in a, in a regional basis, and giving visibility into four or five counties and really kind of this became kind of a catalyst for for sharing information across the different you know uh, jurisdictions and really kind of got the conversation going to get everyone uh, understanding of what's going on how this uh, how all this information can be flowing this and this will certainly help them uh, to be better prepared uh, during future events you know wildfires floods earthquakes that may impact their, their jurisdiction, a real kind of educational opportunity there in, in their area. So uh, congratulations to, to Bonneville and their great work to be prepared for, uh, along with, with Salem and, and the state of Oregon as well. So hopefully some things that you all can learn from as well and, and per perhaps take inspiration from in terms of how other jurisdictions are, are, are getting prepared. So certainly we'll, these are some of the key resources that we'll provide in, in an email after the event. Um, as Mike mentioned, the um, he's graciously provided access to the uh, feature services for all the, his eclipse analysis, and that's there. The solution templates that Kevin highlighted during his uh, section, some of the ways information. Also wanted to note that we have recordings of some of our past public safety webinars, and those uh, highlight some key capabilities. And so that's another opportunity to dig in if you want to, uh, uh, to, 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 to learn more. So just a couple of things in closing before we kind of open it up for, for discussion and questions. Um, you know, obviously um, it, it's a little bit, you know, there's only, it's only three weeks out and a lot of planning's probably happened. If you, if you haven't been engaged with in those meetings, we'd encourage you to, to do so and, and try and come prepared with information products to start a conversation with. Um, use this as an opportunity to have discussions with public safety officials about the, their needs. What types of questions do they need, you know, answers to? And, and if possible, try and have these conversations in, you know, what I'd say, quote unquote, business terms, you know, and some of the capabilities that you can provide from a GIS perspective, from situation awareness, getting information you know, into and out of the field, um, getting information out to the public. And there still may be some exercises, either you know, tabletops or, or, or other types of exercises. So you know, definitely a chance to participate in those and, and uh, even in things that you can kind of help organize from a GIS perspective, even short, spontaneous 
exercises would 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 be uh, um, helpful. So I just wanted to you know in in closing here just a, a couple of uh, uh, comments and, and questions that have come in during the course of the the discussion. And, and the, the first one will go to Mike. And maybe Mike, if you can kind of talk about some of the the experiences that you've had you know, visiting uh, eclipses that have happened across the, the, the world over the past, you know, 25 years and, and the types of impacts that you've witnessed firsthand. Can you can you make a couple of comments there from, from your, your experience? Well, well certainly. Um, first, I would say that uh, it, it truly is, is an, um, the, the most dramatic sight that you can see in nature. And I think uh, that idea is going to come across through social media um, in the last week or so. I think that's when the real impact is, is going to happen. Um, I've traveled all over the world to see total solar eclipses from Africa to the Arctic and and, and beyond. Um, so uh, the, the, the closest analog to this eclipse was the eclipse that I um, visited in 1999 in, in Europe. Uh, while I was in rural Austria, I didn't have any particular issues with uh, with traffic uh, or, or emergency response or anything like that. But I, I heard many stories of, of major traffic jams um, a, a, along the path of the eclipse. Um, this eclipse is, 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 of course, a little unique in, in that it's the first total solar eclipse in the United States and the mainland U.S. since 1979. So it's been a long time. Most people, very few Americans relatively have, have, have seen this spectacle. Um, so um, it, it'll be quite a sight. And, and I, I think it will have quite an impact uh, mainly because of, of social media. Lots of people are going to get the idea to go in the in the last few days. Great, thank you, Mike. The, the next question I wanted to uh, play, send to, to Kevin and Kevin. Someone asked if there's a single online place where people can go to report, you know, uh, road closures and delays and, and the like. Um, and uh, I, I wish that magical source, you know, kind of exists. But maybe you can talk about how you know ways may serve to, to meet some of those those needs. Can you can you comment on that from a from a single place to report? Sure. Yeah. I, I think you know it's. Uh, you know, think of ways as you know it, it is almost kind of a social media source of information. You know, it's it's crowdsourced uh, traffic information. So it it's probably the closest you can get to a multi-jurisdictional um, source of traffic-related information. And road closures is one of the things that that ways reports on. Um, or, or sends out, you know, has data for, right? It's it's all crowd reported, uh, but it is also, you know, you can, when you sign up for that connected citizens program with Waze, as a government agency, you can sign up for a two-way agreement so that, you know, if I am the city of Nashville or the state of Oregon or something like that, and I'm going to have planned construction projects and planned road closures, you can submit that data two ways. That's actually part of the you know, connected citizens program is having a two-way relationship where you you get the feed, you know, to use and and the connector for geo events and can connect to their feed. But you're also pushing data two ways because um, a lot of that information is it's really just controlled at the the either the state or the local government level. Um, so there's no real one source of information, um, you know, that you would consider you know 100% authoritative. Great, um, thanks, Kevin. Well, well, that concludes everything that we wanted to uh, to share with you today. We we appreciate your time. We appreciate you uh, uh, joining us. We we hope that you learned uh, something new and and walk can walk away with some new ideas on how you can uh, leverage GIS to be better prepared for and and respond to poten any potential issues that arise with with the eclipse. So we we certainly hope that uh, everyone uh, remains safe in all of your events. Uh, go off with it without a hitch during the the total eclipse here coming up here in, in a couple of weeks and and with that that concludes uh, today's we webinar. Have a good day, everyone.